Well, previously on Good and Basic, we talked a little bit about the structure of logic. We talked a little bit about it in the video called Science Isn't Logical, or another one in You're Not As Logical As You Think You Are. In logic, there are two branches on the tree. Branch one is inductive logic, and branch two is deductive logic. And the key word to understanding the difference is necessarily. Does the conclusion necessarily follow from the premises? When you give an argument, you have a conclusion, which is the thing that you want to prove, and then you have the things that you say to try to support that. Those are your premises. Now, an example of a deductive argument would go like this. My conclusion is, I have a coin in my right hand. That is my conclusion. Now, my evidence to say why you should believe that are two statements. Statement one, I have a coin in one of my two hands. Statement two, it's not in my left hand. Now, what do you know with absolute certainty if you buy the two things that I said? Thing one that I said, first premise, the first supporting statement, was I have a coin in one of my two hands. Take it, just take it with a grain of salt. The second statement was the coin is not in my left hand. Now what do you know? I have a coin in one of my two hands. It's not in this hand, therefore you know with certainty it has to be in this hand. This is the way that deductive logic works. Now, I'm going to give two very similar arguments. One of them is going to be deductive, and the other one is not going to necessarily follow, and so it's going to be inductive. Inductive holds all the arguments that don't quite meet the standard of deductive. And the only arguments that are ever considered valid that is a technical term, valid, are deductive arguments. John is a man. No man can run a three minute mile. So, John cannot run a three minute mile. The conclusion is, John cannot run a three minute mile. The supporting statements I gave were, John is a man. No man can run a three minute mile. Now, if you buy those statements that John is a man, we'll accept that. And the second statement, that no man can run a three-minute mile, so he's a member of the man class, he can't run a three-minute mile, it's impossible. So the conclusion necessarily follows from the premises, it's already built into them. John is a man, no man has run a three-minute mile, so John can't run a three-minute mile. No one has. Now, in this case, the conclusion is the same, John can't run a three-minute mile, and you might say, well, probably not, but is that guaranteed because of the premises? And you have to say no, because all I've said is that no man ever has. The difference between these two arguments, in one of them, if you buy the premises and just accept them, the conclusion has to follow. It necessarily follows. You can't escape it. And on the other side, if you buy the premises, you believe both of them. You believe that no man has ever run three minute mile. Okay, I accept that. And you believe that John is a man. You don't have to believe the conclusion. It's not built in. John could be the world's fastest crazy hybrid person who's able to crack that number. I mean, he's half cheetah, or I mean, I guess that breaks the John as a man rule, but I mean, it, it's possible you could break that rule. Because all we've said is that no man has, not no man can. And so it's not built in. Any argument that uses probabilities works that way. Most people who watch Star Wars hate Jar Jar Binks. So I could say, most people who watch Star Wars hate Jar Jar Binks. Maria watches Star Wars, so Maria hates Jar Jar Binks. Is it likely? Yes. Is it a reasonably good argument? Yeah. But it's on the inductive class because that structure is invalid. So anyway, there's two broad classes of logic. Inductive arguments are going to include all probabilities, they're going to include most science, and they're going to include most of the arguments that you're going to make from a day-to-day -day basis. Because frankly, deductive arguments that are locked in place are actually kind of rare, and most of the time they're a little bit artificial. One example of a deductive argument that you can work on at home, on the newspaper, is a Sudoku puzzle. In a Sudoku puzzle, if you accept the rules of the game, which are that you know, only one of each number can be in each column in each uh, box, then based off of the numbers that are already there, you can prove and be certain about where all the rest of the numbers go without making any probably guesses. Making those probably guesses will get you in trouble in a Sudoku puzzle. Only deductive arguments are ever valid. Not all inductive arguments are wrong. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing below, and if you enjoyed the video and learned something about logic, please hit the like button. Thank you very much.